early 2000s. The robotics industry is shining with innovation and ambition. Among the pioneers, there was Rethink Robotics, a company that dared to redefine how robots and humans work together. But despite its groundbreaking vision, Rethink Robotics ultimately failed. Today, we explore the timeline of this company's rise and fall, uncovering the critical lessons for the startups in robotics. It all began in 2008, when two renowned figures in robotics, Rodney Brooks and Ann Whitaker, founded Herland Robotics in Boston. Their mission? To create collaborative robots, or cobots, that would safely work alongside humans in industrial settings. A revolutionary idea at the time. The company raised an initial $7 million in funding and began developing its first robots. They introduced an innovative concept called the Series Elastic Actuators. Unlike traditional rigid actuators, these type of actuators used springs to absorb shocks and sense the force, making the robots safer and more cost-effective. The series elastic actuators act like a built-in shock absorber. They are cautioning unexpected impacts and even can sense how hard the robot is pushing or pulling. That's a brilliant idea. Safer robots and cheaper components. However, this clever spring trick came with a catch. It made the robot slower and less precise, which we'll see later became a big problem. Fast forward to 2012, the company was renamed Rethink Robotics, starting a new chapter of their history. That September, they launched the first collaborative robot, Baxter. With its two arms and animated eyes, Baxter was designed to be user-friendly and affordable. It was priced at just $22,000. And that included a year of software updates and warranty. Baxter was unique in several points. Apart from its special type of actuators, Baxter could be programmed by simply guiding its arms to teach its tasks. I, I personally tested myself at one of the exhibitions and I can tell you that the experience was very smooth and cool. It was a very innovative way of introducing collaborative robots in the automation sector. By that time, Randy Brooks was appearing in most of important media of the time, like for example, 60 Minutes, The New York Times, and other prominent outlets promoting how cobots could work safely around humans and reshape the manufacturing industry. By June 2012, before it even sold a single robot, Rethink had already raised $62 million. In early 2013, sales were moving slow. Although they have received many inquiries, by March, only several dozens of Baxter robots were already sold. In April, the company introduced the Baxter Research Robot, which included a software development kit. This version was attacking the academy and corporate research and development department in order to win more clients. This SDK leveraged ROS, the robot operating system. It used it to enhance programmability and customization, making it appealing for researchers exploring advanced robotics applications. While this using ROS helped sustain interest, it did little to address the challenges in industrial adoption. Despite the struggles, in 2014, Rethink Robotics secured an additional 26 million in a Series D funding. However, fundamental issues persisted. The Series Elastic Actuators, while being cost-effective, they lack the precision and repeatability manufacturers were requesting. 
Because of the series elastic actuators, Baxter was neither precise nor smooth. And that, besides safety, was the main concern for clients. Apart from preciseness, manufacturers also found Baxter to undesign impractical. Most of them were used to single-arm robots and couldn't figure out how to use, how to make profit of the two-arms approach. Additionally, Baxter had a close architecture, limiting the integration of third-party elements. By that time, competitors like Universal Robots, with their open systems and precise single-arm robots, began to overshadow Rethink Robotics. In 2015, Rethink Robotics launched Sawyer, a single-arm robot designed to address Baxter's shortcomings. Priced at $29,000, Sawyer was more precise and compact, targeting the electronics manufacturing industry, particularly in Asia. Sawyer also incorporated ROS compatibility to provide greater flexibility and enable developers to create custom applications. While Sawyer was an improvement from Baxter, it still relied on serious elastic actuators, limiting its competitiveness and its speed and accuracy. They improved it from Baxter, but the improvements only were applicable to a reduced set of applications. Despite raising over $150 million, Rethink Robotics has struggled to turn its innovative technology into sustainable sales. Mounting losses and competition from faster, more precise robots sealed its fate. In October 2018, the company shut down and its assets were acquired by Han Group. The story of Rethink Robotics offers three crucial lessons for robotics startups. First, understand your customers. Rethink prioritizes ease of use and flexibility, but manufacturers value precision and repeatability. Startups must align the product with customer needs and do it quickly. I don't think Rethink Robotics ever understood the demands of the customers since they have the opportunity to rectify with Sawyer, but they decided to double down with the same type of technology on it. I suspect they may have thought that the way of doing things would finally impose, but at the end it didn't happen. Second, open architecture matters. While Rethink Robotics opted for a closed system, Competitors like Universal Robots thrive by allowing third-party customization, fostering broader adoption of their robots. Rethink opted for adding ROS to the robot, and that was a good thing, and allowed them to get introduced into the university world. Many universities bought Baxter for teaching and research. I personally saw them in many universities around the world, but the the problem is that the university is not a market big enough to sustain such kind of a company. And third, hardware development is hard. Developing hardware takes time and money. Without a strict financial discipline, even the most promising startups can run out of money very quickly. As a personal thought, I personally saw Rethink at several important robotics conferences around the world with many people of their team in their booth. Conferences are very expensive and need to be carefully evaluated the return that the company is going to get from attending one. 150 millions of dollars is a lot of money, but it goes quickly if there is no strict control on it. Rethink Robotics may no longer operate as an independent company, but its vision lives on through the Han Group, which acquired its assets and intellectual property. The Han Group has continued to explore opportunities to integrate Rethink's innovative software and designs into new robotic solutions, potentially paving the way for future breakthroughs. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, 
please give us a like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more episodes of Why Robotics Startups Fail. But wait a minute, if you are inspired to create the next breakthrough in robotics and want to build a foundation in robotic software, then there is a crucial skill that you need to master, ROS, the Robot Operating System. And that's where the Construct Robotics Institute comes in. The Construct offers comprehensive hands-on courses to help you learn ROS from the ground up. Whether you are just starting or looking to deepen your knowledge, with our step-by-step -step tutorials, real-life simulation projects, and expert guidance, you can gain the skills needed to become a proficient robotics developer. Don't let your vision become another untapped potential. Start building smarter, more adaptive robots today. Visit the Construct platform and explore their extensive range of courses on ROS and other robotics technologies. Empower your journey from concept to creation, because in robotics, knowledge and preparation are as critical as innovation itself.